Now we're going to take a look at absolute value inequalities. All absolute value inequalities are, are compound inequalities. That's it. So remember when we were solving absolute value equations, we had to do something special. So when we did something special, if we had the absolute value of x equals 5, remember what we did. We got the absolute value by itself, and then we branched, right? We said, okay, x is going to be set equal to the positive value, and x is going to be set equal to the negative value. And then we put it in brackets, and we always did least to greatest. Okay? Absolute value inequalities are very, very similar. We still have to isolate, and we're still going to branch. So, for example, this one right here. I have x is greater than or equal to 5. Now, remember... Once you branch, those absolute value brackets go away, right? Because we're simplifying it. So x is greater than or equal to 5. But now what we have to do is we set it here. But now I'm going to split my sign and my target number. So in one of these cases, it stays exactly the same. But in this case, I flip my sign and I flip that integer to the opposite value. Okay, so if I look here, look at my target numbers, they are not least to greatest, so I'm going to put them, and I have x is less than or equal to negative 5, and x is greater than or equal to 5. Because they are in this order, I can look at my arrows, and I know this guy's going to the left, and this guy's going to the right. So right away, I know that it is an or statement. When, when they go opposite, that's an or statement. So all I need to do is put the word or in there box it, and that's my inequality statement, okay? Interval notate, let's graph it first. So my target number is negative 5, and I go all the way to the left. My target number is 5, and I go all the way to the right. That's my graph. And interval notation, remember, you go all the way left, so it's going to go to negative infinity. Infinity always has a parenthesis, and it goes to negative 5 with a block, because negative 5 can be a solution must include the word or. I pick back up again at 5, and I go all the way to infinity with a parenthesis around it. Okay, that's case 1. Let's look at case 2. Case 2, so absolute value, I said x is less than or equal to 8, and this one I have x is greater than or equal to negative 8. So remember, you flip your sign and your number. Now, these are not, my target numbers are not lined up least to greatest, so I'm going to do that. And I get x is greater than or equal to negative 8. x is less than or equal to 8. Now, just looking at this, notice my arrows point in. So that tells me if my arrows point in, that's an and statement. I do not write an and statement like that, but I know because they're lined up that that's what's going to happen. My arrows point in. So I'm going to have to rewrite that AND statement, but I like to graph it first. So let's graph it. And close circle on negative 8. Close circle on 8. I already see that they're going together, so I'm going to move these together. Now, my inequality statement, remember, is one variable. I have negative 8 on the left. I have 8 on the right. And my arrows always go in the same direction. This x is less than or equal to 8, and if I read it backwards, x is going to be greater than negative 8. Remember, my arrows are always going to go in the same direction, right? And then, of course, interval notation, it starts at negative 8. Negative 8 can be a solution, and it ends at 8, and 8 can be a solution, so that's my interval notation. All right, so what does this mean? Well, all it means is that absolute value, absolute value inequalities are compound inequalities. Now, if it is a or statement, that means it's going to be greater than. Okay, so or statements are going to be when it's isolated, you have a greater than. And statements are going to be less than or equal to. Now, honestly, 
I don't have the brain power to remember that. I don't want to remember that. So that's why I always set up my target numbers least to greatest. I just like to look at the arrows and see, okay, are they going out? If they're going out, it's an or. And if they're going towards each other, it's an and statement. Okay, so I don't remember that rule, but if you want it, it's there. All right, so let's take a look at some examples now that we have talked about it. And the steps to solve are very, very similar to what we've done before, right? Um, step one is we're going to isolate the absolute value expression, which is what we always done with absolute value equalities. And then we're going to create two cases. You can use the KISS method, and all that means is keep it, switch, switch to set up the two cases. So I'll use that as we get, kind of go through. Um, we solve both inequalities and then we graph the solution and write your answer in interval notation. Now, I want answers written in interval notation and inequality notation. Okay, I have to have those two. So let's take a look at that, what that means. So I'm going to keep it, so kiss, keep it, x is less than 7, and then I'm going to keep it switch switch right now look at my target numbers they are not least to greatest so I'm gonna rearrange them X is greater than negative 7 X is less than 7 now I can see that these arrows are pointing towards each other and if they're pointing towards each other that's an AND statement so again that's not how we write an AND statement but I'm gonna graph it first so I have open circle on 7 open circle, or excuse me, open circle on negative 7, that's not negative 7, open circle on negative 7, open circle on 7, I know it's an and statement because they go together, looks like that. I'm going to write my inequality statement above. Remember, it's one variable, negative 7, positive 7, arrows always go the same direction. So if I read it this way, x is less than 7. If I read it backwards, x is greater than negative 7. So that's my ANS, that's my inequality statement. And of course, interval notation is negative seven to seven, both with parentheses around them. Okay? All right, let's jump down to number three and take a look. Take a look in blue. All right, so I'm gonna keep it. The first one is keep it. X minus one is greater than six. Here I've got to do some algebra, so I'm gonna add one to both sides. And I get X is greater than seven. Now I'm going to apply the KISS method, method, which is keep it, switch, switch. Switch my sign and I switch my number. And then of course I'm going to do some algebra and I get x is less than negative 5. Look at my target numbers. These are not least to greatest so I'm going to rearrange and I'm going to have x is less than negative 5 and then I have x is greater than 7. So once there, my target numbers are arranged, I can see that my errors are going out. When they're going out, that's an OR statement. You have two different lines. So if it's an OR statement and they're already there, I'm just going to tack on the word OR and box it and call that inequality a day. Now I'm going to come over here and graph it. Negative uh, 5 and X is less than negative 5, so it's going to go that way. 7, and remember these arrows follow the direction of the arrows, so I'm going to go that way. I already know it's an OR statement when I did my inequality. So interval notation, this graph starts in negative infinity, always a parenthesis. It goes to negative 5 with a parenthesis. I must include the word or. Or picks up again at 7 with a parenthesis because it's open circle, goes to infinity, and infinity, of course, always has a parenthesis around it. Okay? So very similar to absolute value equations. Let's do a couple of more. Um, Okay. I don't know why my video is doing that, so I will make another video with some more examples.